Hi, so welcome to part two of Permitted Development, Buildings, etc., where we're discussing the additional space that you can add to your property um, that's not attached to your property. So things like annexes, swimming pools, garages, all those, those things that, that help you enjoy your property more, but that you cannot sell off as a separate dwelling um, at a later stage. So if you're joining us again, welcome. And if this is your first time with us, please subscribe and tick the little bell just so you can be updated when we release new content. Okay, so a little recap on the last video. In part one, we talked about you know, what is um, a Class E addition. Uh, we talked about where that building can go and we talked about the, the height of that, that building. And we're now gonna finish off going through Class E and just covering off the, the, the last little nuances that, um, that can catch people out. So as we move into, into part E, um, the next stuff it starts to cover off is, is for those specialist land conditions, such as, as um, the areas of natural beauty or uh, conservation areas, etc. Um, and it just starts to cover off a few more restrictions that, that, can be, that can catch you out if you're not careful. So the next point of part E essentially says that you cannot have uh, this additional space for buildings if it's going to be within the curtilage of a listed building. Another little point of contention that virtually every single permitted development um, class contains is that again, the, the space cannot have a balcony, a veranda, or a raised platform. Um, and this is because these, these things generally cause issues with neighbors. You also can't have an antenna on, on anything that you build under class E. Um, so it's worthwhile noting that if you're hoping to put your satellite dish on that building, you need to check other permitted development rights and other planning um, rights just to, to understand whether or not that, that satellite dish can, can go on your new building. If you remember rightly, we also talked about Part E covering off fuel containers. Um, another restriction is that, that that fuel container can't be anything more than 3,500 litres. As I mentioned earlier, there is a restriction on putting Class E buildings near listed buildings. Um, there is also a restriction on areas of natural beauty and other specialist areas like the broads. And what that restriction is, is this makes actually for quite a very tight restriction. When you think of how, how loose Class E is, um, if you're not in one of these areas, if you are in one of these areas, Class E really restricts you down to, to, to a certain size of building. And what it says is that if you have a house that sits in one of these areas of um, outstanding beauty, so here's our house, and we've got a, a garden that goes all the way around it. Class E puts an imaginary 20 meter boundary all around our existing property. And then it says that we can build a, a new separate building in our, in our grounds, but that this new separate building can be no bigger than 10 square meters of floor space. Um, so that is quite a small building. You're not going to get a swimming pool in there. You're only going to get a garage and maybe a bit of a workshop or, or, or a shed or something like that, something to, to look after chickens, but nothing massive. And obviously remember again, the whole principal elevation scenario, you can't build beyond that principal elevation. The next restriction on building siting is to do with Article 2.3 land. And what that essentially says is that if you've got a building that's, that's in Article 2.3 land, so if this is your house, and there is a, a wall stroke boundary over here and a wall stroke boundary over here. You, in this instance, you can't build between the house and the wall. So you cannot build here and you cannot build here. So that means that, that your, your, um, your Class E building generally has to be in your back garden at the rear of your property. Okay, so that's it for Class E. Um, we've wrapped it up pretty quickly. As I've, as I've said, hopefully you can see that um, Class E, in most cases, does give you a lot of free reign to, to build additional buildings and to, and to really add some exciting spaces to your, your home. Um, far more than some of the other classes to, to deal with extending your property. And if, you are, if you're looking to, to, to add in spaces such as playrooms, offices, um, swimming pools, annexes, things like that. And using class E, instead of using up your, your other classes, A, B and C, that extend your dwelling, can really help to, to, to get a lot more space in your, in your property, um, making sure that the permitted development on the main house gets used for important things such as, as bedrooms and, and 
general living space. So thank you again for watching part two of Permitted Development Class E Buildings Etc, which is discussing how you can add additional buildings within the curtilage of your property. If you like the content, please leave us comments, subscribe and tick the bell. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. My name is Neil Scroxon and this has been part two of Permitted Development Class E Buildings Etc. Thank you.